This is a modern interpretation of a diptych or tablet sundial. This one is oversized compared to the originals. It's about 12 inches square, but it has the key features. It folds flat. It has at least two different types of sundial when opened. It has a connecting string gnomon, and there's a built-in compass. This diptych pairs a vertical and a horizontal dial that will reflect the same time. The original diptychs were small. This one is about 2 by 3 inches and was made in Nuremberg, Germany in the late 1700s. Many were made of ivory as they were valuable pieces. This one happens to be wood. They were meant to be portable, much as we might carry a watch or a smartphone today. For proper time reading, they also recognized the importance of latitude and included a built-in compass for alignment with north. Timekeeping was simpler then as they didn't have to correlate solar time with standard time. When closed, the cover panel of a traditional diptych would have additional information or decoration. In this version, it provides the information needed to convert solar time to standard time. To open the diptych, we would first loosen the string gnomon that keeps it closed. Opening it along its hinge and dropping the vertical dial plate into its notch. We then tighten the string gnomon a bit to make a straight line between the two dial faces. And finally, using the compass to align the dial with true north. It is now ready to read solar time. I've made many of these dials to be site specific for latitude, compass correction, and longitude. The original diptychs were more flexible as time was simply the sun hour for wherever you were. No further time adjustments were needed. Coming back to the new Boston example, it is designed for 43 degrees north latitude. The gnomon is set at that angle as it needs to be parallel with the Earth's axis. The angle where the gnomon meets the vertical dial is called its co-latitude, 47 degrees in this case, and it forms a right angle triangle along the hinge line. The compass is used to align the dial with geographic north, also called the meridian. We do this using the compass with magnetic correction for our location. The original diptychs conveniently did not need magnetic correction as geographic north and magnetic north were virtually coincident in Europe at that time. Over two centuries later, that's no longer the case as the magnetic pole is always slowly changing its position. In this view of the diptych, we can better see how the vertical and horizontal dials relate to one another. Notice how the extended hour lines from the two dials meet along the line of the hinge. They are interdependent. With the line work from one of these dials, we can construct the other. Standard for horizontal and vertical dials, the 6 o'clock lines are due east and west, and the 12 o'clock lines are centered on the north-south meridian. The rest of the lines are constructed to be latitude-specific. As I keep saying in these videos, all dials are derived from the equatorial, and it is the projection of the lines that give us latitude-specific results. The magnetic correction is also site-specific. You can determine that online using NOAA's website, that is the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. The full range of daylight hours can be shown on the horizontal dial. It varies by latitude. The further north your latitude, the more daylight hours you will have up to the day of the summer solstice. At 43 degrees north, it would be 15 and a half hours, with sunrise at 4.15 a.m. and sunset at 7.45 p.m. On the vertical dial face, the maximum range is always 12 hours. In the summer months, the sun will be rising and setting behind the vertical face of the sundial. That limits it to the 12-hour maximum. Using the information on the cover, we can convert solar time to standard time or clock time. 
potentially three corrections are needed. One is for our longitude and its position within our time zone. It is minus 13.24 minutes for this longitude. Then we need to verify if daylight saving time applies. Assuming that today is August 15th, the answer would be yes. Then we need a value from the equation of time. This provides a daily adjustment for the Earth's elliptical orbit around the Sun plus the tilt of the Earth's axis along that orbit. Solar days are 24 hours long on average. This adjustment is needed to keep steady clock time. The equation of time here is a graphed curve. At the bottom of the graph are the months of the year. Assuming that it is August 15th, we extend a line upward until it meets the curve, and then we look at the corresponding value on the left side of the graph, plus four minutes in this case. Returning to the horizontal dial, we see that solar time is about 10.30 a.m. We now apply the corrections to get corresponding standard time. Plus 60 minutes for daylight saving time, plus 4 minutes from the equation of time, and minus 13 minutes for our longitude within the time zone. So it is about 11.21 standard time or clock time. Thanks for exploring this diptych sundial with me, and please consider joining me for other related videos. <laughs>